Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so how often should we mention that we think uh, Dunstan is overstating his assets? Because there's, he's getting the insurance payout, right? Yeah. So is, is that a worthy, like, would you mention that? that there might um, be a there? Okay, so you are telling, you are releasing the answer to all the students. That's okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can see that your understanding about their reporting objectives, right? Remember, uh, when we talk about chapter, the early chapters, the uh, reporting, the, the uh, management, uh, management's uh, intention, reporting objectives is important, right? Right. You are absolutely right. In this case, because they are, uh, the insurance companies relies on the number uh, to uh, decide on the insurance proceeds, right? Yeah. So then the reporting objectives is to exaggerate that number, right? So you are right. absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the way he came up with the uh, assessment for the fair value of the building, um, is that the best method? Or would there be a better way to assess? Because he said it's equivalent to building 13, I think, is what he said. That, that He said that was the closest way to estimate what the fair value of it would be. Um, so for that, I will leave that to you <laughs> to make a judgment. Okay. okay um, which, which asset are you talking about? Uh, the fair value of the, hang on, let me pull this up. The burned building. For the burned building, right? And then they give you the table of the, um, the breakdown. Okay, um, just give me one second. Take a look. Do we enjoy the cases? Yes, yeah. It's good because when we first started writing them, I had no idea what I was doing. I still think I have no idea what I'm doing. But, well, uh, I think that's a good feeling. That's the right <laughs> feeling. I mean, I will be very troublesome if you said, oh, I'm really good with this now. <laughs> right? It's, uh, it's, a, it's a learning process. Sorry, he says uh, store 37 best approximates the uh, destroyed store's activities. It's, uh, I have the digital textbook, so I don't know what actual page it's on, but it's under okay. the inventory. I think I can find it, yeah. So there's like store 26, store eight, and store 37. And then they have December 7th estimated inventory, and then inventory at uh, November 30th. This is the chapter eight case, right? Yes. Building. Uh, Oh, store number. You are talking about inventory, not the building. Sorry, yeah, inventory, yeah. Okay. Um, so did you, which store are you talking about? So he says, he says he thinks that store 37 best approximate the destroyed store's activities. Mm -hmm. Do we have to comment on whether or not that's fair for him to make that assessment? Yeah, or do that, we just... yeah that's important, right? Okay. Yeah, that's important. Okay. Uh, and my other question, um, the, uh, again, the inventory section, um, my understanding of this chapter is you have to do write downs to inventory over time, right? Would that factor in here for the insurance claim? If he had on sellable like, items that didn't sell? And he started putting discounts and that sort of thing. Yeah, so I think you are on track. I think okay. you are doing a very good job now. This because whatever you were saying is is. Uh, <laughs> Should I job. stop talking? Or? <laughs> I don't know. So you are asking me questions, and then you are giving all all the answers to to all the all the groups. I think good, I think for, for well, because for the first case we didn't do well in the second case we didn't do well but i think you're curving you're curving all the grades so that's what i'm trying to figure no, out no i'm not um i'm not expecting you to do everything right okay. this is your second case i can't expect you get like 40 out of 50 right that's right. just not reasonable um so 
I guess I have a reasonable explanation. Um, so I think, yeah, because some of the points are kind of hard to get, right? Um, but most of the points should be uh, manageable, should be uh, should be achievable, right? As long right. as you practice more, right? Well, because we talked during our office hours for case two, and you said, you know, you have to make sure you're an accountant and not a business consultant. Yeah. But some of the marks for case two were about like how far away the inventory was if they had to go and pick it up from um, the, the, like the, the uh, or sorry, the, uh, the lubricant. So it was very oh. far away. There was a lot of inventory if they had to go and collect it, if it didn't sell or something like that. So that was the only part where I was confused. Oh, that, I see. Is that a suggestion? No, it was just more like, yeah, it, that was one of the points that you could get. Okay. If you, if you yeah. said that right now. Yeah, that's, that's another thing, right? Like, uh, you know, sometimes these points, you know, it's debatable, right? Whether, you know, when you write a case, everyone has their own answer, right? Right. Uh, whether right. these points are that important or not, right? It's debatable. Uh, that's why this is not like a, pure black and white right and when i was marking your responses i'm trying to be really uh you know you know if there's a few points that you know you disagree that's fine right because you are not marked based on the percentage of how many points you get right right yeah okay. so okay. i'm helping you by uh being more encouraging right instead of just doing a percentage right yeah, really appreciate uh, I'm it. I'm trying to encourage you to learn, to learn, right? It's the mark is secondary. The primary thing is you learn. Um, so if, as long as you feel that, you know, I am progressing, I, I know better and better, right? How to write it. That's, that's good. That's all we want to get, right? I kind of um, wish there were three more so I could keep practicing. <laughs> yeah. In the CPA exam, yeah. Uh, they do not require you to hit all the points either, right? For example, uh, there are maybe three accounting adjustments you, you need, you need uh, that are available, right? Yeah. In the case, maybe there are, let's say, five, uh, five spots like you should make an accounting adjustment. Uh, in the CPA, they will only request you three out of five. So it's not like you have to hit all the points, right? Nobody can hit all the points because you don't have time. So that case is developed in the CPA exam with a lot of rooms, right? For people to, uh, to work on it, right? Uh -huh. um, so it's not like a, a, a mechanic pipelines, everywhere flows, flows, flows through the same pipeline down, right? Uh, so there are lots of opportunities. CPA wants to see your competency, right? So right. if there are five points, you mentioned, you, you, you touched the three, they consider that, consider that as a competency, right? Oh, okay. So that's kind of similar to what I'm, what I'm doing. I'm not judge you based on points for points, right? Yeah. I'm, so for example, certain points are really important, right? Uh, for the revenue discussion, right? In the case two, the revenue recognition, remember the diamond approach, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, you mentioned about the two alternatives, right? Yeah. And uh, what's the implication, right? Uh, which one is more reasonable, right? And what's your recommendation, right? Those are really important, right? If you miss that, I mean, uh, even in the CPA exams, revenue recognition is very, very important, right? right. Whenever right. you get a case, you have to think about it. Is there any issues about the re revenue recognition, right? Um, for the other one is for the uh, error, right? The inventory error. Um, in this case, it's interesting, right? Because this case gave you lots of numbers, right? Yeah. Remember the case one? Uh, you barely have any numbers for case one, right? Um, so I purposely choose the case with a lot of numbers to give you see a different case. So if you have a lot of numbers, guess what? That means you probably can do a lot of analysis, right? Yeah. That probably means you can quantify on something, right? So some student, uh, you know, gave a recommendation. Oh yeah, there may be some errors in the inventory. Uh, make sure, you know, calculate it. Who is going to calculate it? The partner, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the plus, it's a really a simple calculation, right? It's not that 
hard. So why don't you do it, right? Even mm -hmm. if you want to impress your partner, why don't you do it? Right? Okay. okay. So in, in this case, there are um, lots of information, lots of numbers, and uh, it's your judgment to think about it. What is the story behind these numbers, right? right. So yeah. you compare the gross margin per unit versus the gross margin per income statement, right? Yeah. So things like that, I mean, this is a learning process, right? Uh, once you learn the auditing, you probably will have a better idea in terms of these analytical procedures, right? Um, so again, I have low expectations, right? Okay. Um, okay. So you don't have to hit all the points, but mm -hmm. I want you to see that. I want you to know that exists, so you are learning from it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm starting to learn, but yeah, I still have no idea. So that's okay. Yeah, I think we all start from somewhere. Yeah. yeah exactly. So uh, there are some members of my group in here. I don't know if they have any questions they want to ask, but otherwise, I think we are all good. Okay. Claire, did you have anything you wanted to ask? Mm, no, that's all good. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. Have an awesome weekend. Okay, you too. Yeah. And if we have questions, any more questions, just swing by office hours on uh, Monday. Yeah? Send me an email because uh, okay. it's based on request. Because I don't want to, you know, if nobody talk to me that they want to meet me, there's no point for me to have it on, right? So right. if people plan to come to talk to me, just uh, send me an email ahead of time, right? Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you very much. No problem. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Professor. Bye. Yeah, bye. Sorry, Dr. Mm -hmm. I just have one more question about go today's ahead. class. Okay, go ahead, Tim. Yeah, uh, so back to, there was an example that you used the tangible, the machine. Yeah. To, to go through those six criteria. Yeah. And then um, the part, I think it was part D, like the market one. Yeah. So that for that part, I don't really understand, like, do you look at the value of the machine itself or or whatever the machine can produce. Like, which one are you looking at there? Yeah, so basically, whatever you are using it for, you are, if you consider that, as I said, it has to have future economic benefit, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you can have a very, very expensive new machine. If it yeah. doesn't help you earn money, right? Then it's not an asset. Okay. Right? If it doesn't help you earn money, it's not an asset. It just expenses. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? You just too bad. Oh, even the machine is dollars, you build a garbage, right? If I put oh, okay. it a different way. You spend a lot of money, but you build a garbage. That is it's not useful. It doesn't help you to generate revenue. So what if like you can resell the machine? With a good price, but yeah, if you can resell, it, if, if you can if sell it, it, it doesn't help you produce. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't help you produce good products for your company. Then does this fulfill that criteria? Yeah, if you build a a, a machine and you are able to sell it, that's still your asset, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's your inventory, right? If you are building a machine, you sell it. That's your inventory. Um, yeah, so you would recognize your inventory, the value of the inventory, and then you resell it. Remember, you're gonna de-recognize it, right? You record. Um, so basically, you debit cash, uh, you debit, okay, what's, what? you debit revenue, and you credit, okay, so that's what happened. You debit cash, uh, you debit the AR, credit sales, okay? And you debit the cost of sale, cost of sales. You credit inventory, right? Okay. And the difference is your profit, right? The difference is your profit. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because you build the machine and you sell it. That means the machine is your inventory, right? Oh no, no, no! I don't mean like you build your own machine, but like with that same example that you you yeah. bought the machine for twenty million. Uh, like, I guess at that point, like you, you said, we're like, we're not sure if, if you have enough information that tells you the machine 
Oh, uh, machine is internally <laughs> generated, right? It calls yeah. it So yeah, like to fulfill that that part, that that point, like, are you looking at the machine itself, or, or does the machine has to be very useful, to you, like to to produce something that's useful? That's oh, what I mean. Um. So basically, if you are talking about the eyesight, right? Talking about, um, PPE. So there are two things, right? You use it to generate uh, items. You sell the item, right? Mm hmm. Uh, so that's internal use. So maybe what would be a good example for internal use? Okay, so that means their market. The usefulness of the machine. Um, for internal use, the usefulness. So maybe um, you are producing the output you are producing from the machine, okay? Is uh, is the item you need for a higher end product, right? Internal use, internal use needs. So you, okay. you the output does not have to be sold to other people, right? It okay. could be a intermediary product for your up for your uh, higher end product, right? So so you're always looking at the output of the machine, right? You're not really you're not really looking yeah. at the machine itself, right? Yeah, basically that's the idea, right? Because for eyesight, right? You're talking about the past event, control, and the future benefit, right? Mm -hmm. So the future benefit is your output, right? Okay, okay. Right? Because when you, well, if you want to capitalize, right? That's basically the idea. Is the past event ownership? Yeah. The key is, is, that a few, is there a future benefit, right? Right. So, Using a plain language, if I build a garbage, a new garbage, right? It does not mm -hmm. have a future economic benefit. So then I cannot recognize that as an eyesight, right? So, okay. Yeah, you can use it, uh, but it, <laughs> it does not, it may not generate a benefit. Okay, okay. So you're always looking at the output then? <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, so basically you are saying for anything that have a value, the valuation of that thing, um, if it's eyesight, right? If it's eyesight, uh, you mm -hmm. have three ways to evaluate, right? Uh, yeah. From the entry, you are using replacement cost, uh, exit, you are using net realizable value, or you are using the future cash flow, which is the uh, eyesight in use, right? So that's the three ways to value your eyesight, right? But this is the measurement. But now we, the step before the measurement is the recognition, right? So mm -hmm. we're not talking about how to measure the eyesight. We are talking about, is this an eyesight? Is right. it eyesight, right? That's the question we are asking. So then we are saying, does, does it gonna generate a future economic benefit, right? Mm -hmm. If the answer clearly is a yes, if it's the vaccine, right? We know for sure, right? Because we know for sure that people all want it, right? All the countries. Yeah. So we know there is an economic benefit, right? So it should be an asset, right? Uh, okay. But some people could have invented something really useless, right? <laughs> I have seen <laughs> some uh, people, they invest a lot of money for inventions like uh, uh, maybe they invent uh, something to get a snowball, right? So you can play snowball in the summertime, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, something like that, right? How many people want to play snowball in the summertime, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the same feeling, right? Even for little kids, yeah. right? It's really about the snowball or it's really about the, you know, the winter environment, right? Lots of snow mm -hmm. everywhere, and then people have a fun playing, right? Oh, it's just like you know, you have a machine, you just get a snowball and throw to people. Um, you know, there are a lot of bad ideas, right? People invest a lot of money for <laughs> bad things. Uh -huh. uh, but I'm just saying that it's po new machine does not guarantee uh, promise the future benefit. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's this is not a 
fair question, okay? Um, mm -hmm. But it's one of the uh, questions on the textbook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So um, I guess you don't have to be really read into it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as long as you understand. Um, okay. So if you're really um, not comfortable, I think you can read uh, uh, a part of that, right? Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, so that would be the uh, intangible. Okay, just give me one second. Intangible yeah, environment. No okay. So if you go to uh, page four one three, so that's the six criteria. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, okay, you apply to all types of this treatment. So I think there's uh, somewhere saying that it also applies to the tangible asset. So if you read the textbook, um, it, it says mm -hmm. somewhere that the six criteria should be also applicable to the tangible asset. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah no problem. Thank you, yeah. I yeah. think that, that was the only thing I want to clarify, that that's pretty good. Yeah. How everything else is doing overall? Uh, it's okay, I guess. Yeah. Do you feel, uh, okay, let me uh, just, uh, just give me a second.